Hi all, Planet Side Agent here. Today I thought I'd show you uh, my uh, little stove setup that I put together, geez, decades, decades ago when I first started uh, backpacking. And uh, <clears throat> something, and I carried this, uh, well, <laughs> right up till uh, the time I kind of quit backpacking. I haven't been doing it for the last few years. I just. Uh, found that it was easier just to do a day hike into places I wanted to go because <laughs> the logistics were a lot easier than overnighting although I am gonna go with uh, lighter weight stuff and try to get back into it here soon but anyway also I carried this backpacking and for years and years when I used to go cross-country skiing with my wife I'd bring this same kit and use a uh, brew up tea after after lunch when, when uh, we were out skiing cross-country skiing so anyway yeah I got a uh, nylon bag actually this bag is a little higher for the stove because the stove I have now isn't isn't the original stove I had but anyway yeah I made this bag uh, out of just to buy nylon in bulk and just stitched it up myself because it saved a lot of money because back then didn't get all that cheap Chinese stuff so things were expensive stuff sacks were for you know a couple of stitches <laughs> they're kind of expensive but anyway let's see if I can uh, show this here so what I got in here is uh, see this is the second now what let me start over here with the stove this is a uh, bluette um, a gas bluette stove Make sure keeping this centered in the can, in the frame. Um, the original one that I got was a little bit taller because the uh, the pot stands collapsed up, and uh, so it was about this high. But uh, I had to replace it because the gasket that sealed between the stove and the uh, canister had, had shrunk over time because it was probably twenty some years old. Uh, and the gas started leaking out, so I bought replacement. Now these stoves, you can't, they're still making them and you get them in Europe, but you can't even uh, get them here in the States anymore. And you definitely, I used to buy the canisters just about like at Buy Mart or Walmart, places like that, but uh, can't even get them anymore. I don't, they don't import them. So I've got a few canisters left, I guess. I don't know if I'll use this stove or not. There's a lot of other variants out there anymore, like the, the Primus stove with the uh, that you can screw on, which is better. Because these old stoves, you actually screwed them in and punctured the can, so you couldn't couldn't use. In fact, it's just about empty. So anyway, it's a great little stove. Um, I got it originally because uh, the, the like the Saveo one two threes that were available at the time, and the Primus and some of those other ones uh, were were pretty darn expensive and uh, value you know the value of this was a lot a lot better easier to maintain easier to use and like i said cheaper to get into so that's why i went this route and this this stove design actually has a lot of good features that some of the newer ones don't necessarily have um and one thing i didn't really care for much of the way these uh, pot stands work but you know the stove still worked but what it was nice was here I had the uh, it had a stand that came with it which which uh, served two purposes one it 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 balanced the stove better on the ground and two it kept it up off the ground so you didn't transfer cold ground into the canister so it improved the uh, performance on the uh, on the canister and it was a great place I could store my matches in here. So it just to show you how this works, clipped in there, and this fit in here. Sometimes it was a little snug, but especially when it got cold. There we go. So like I said, it kept it up off the ground, so that uh, that worked out nicely. And uh, like I say, I've made a very stable base. See, I use this thing. Yeah, I used to use it in the snow all the time when I skied with cross-country skiing so it uh, worked all the time so also I got a 
little hand towel in here to kind of dry your hands when you're working with it in the stove. So and then uh, here's my, uh, oops, <laughs> got a trouble keeping this in frame today. Uh, here's the windscreen. Like I'm probably mentioned some other videos, I use uh, aluminum foil because uh, it was it's lightness cheap. And this one, you know, you get a lot of uses out of. I've probably replaced several of them over the over the years and years. But uh, yeah, this uh, yeah it works great. You can see this one. <laughs> I've used it used it a lot. And you see the cracks in there. So what I do is I just unfold it and then. I'm not going to show you, but I usually would just I could wrap it around my thigh to get the get it formed, and then uh, I think I mentioned another video. I always leave part of it open because one time I did completely seal it up, and boy, that was a mistake. <laughs> I have another little piece here I carried that I've just used for extra wind protection if I needed it, but I don't think I ever used it in all the years that I've used this stove. So. Anyway, yeah, and this worked out great. It uh, just about an inch above the burner, so it'd cover part of the bottom of the pot or the tea kettle, whatever I was using at the time. I used to, I still got it. I love it. A small Trangia uh, kettle. I always uh, brought that. Should have brought that out today to show you as part of the setup. But anyway, yeah, great little stove. Let's see if it, let's see if it fires up. Probably weight-wise, it's probably comparable to, you know, anything else. This part here, to a lot of the stoves. Voila! Yeah, one thing about these uh, gas stoves is the fuel will get down, goes down, the, uh, the pressure coming out, so the boil time continually got longer and longer, so... That's probably one of the downsides where, uh, you know, like a, a white gas stove, a surveyor, or one of those, or a, a MSRs, any of those, they're going to stay pretty much consistent, especially if you pump them up. But anyway, yeah, I mean, this thing, uh, I've used the old one and this one many times, never failed, good and reliable. I kind of, eventually, uh, they did... Uh, go to uh, uh, the, the gas company they did go to one uh, the, the, the screw on types and I just never upgraded it I figured I'd just use this one as long as I get the canisters but uh, now I can't get the canisters anymore I'm probably gonna switch to something else uh, well you've probably seen my well maybe or maybe not seen the video where I boil on tea out outside in my uh, with one of the fancy feast alcohol stoves but I'm probably gonna switch to alcohol uh, I might use my Sve every now and then. Uh, I'll probably use the, 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 the these new screw-on canister stoves in the future. We'll just retire this one. And but uh, yeah, it was a great little setup, and uh, still happy with it after all these years. So anyway, uh, can't think of anything else to to, to mention about this. So uh, yeah, that's a um, little glass bluette stove. And, uh, oh, uh, just a side note I'll add. These were used, uh, I saw some pictures of uh, an Everest climb. I th might have been Chris Bonington, one of his climbs way back in, when they do that in the 60s, uh, at base camp. And they had a huge pot, the uh, Sherpas did, a huge pot for cooking. And they actually had four of these stoves mounted under this, under this big, huge pot. <laughs> it was quite a quite a sight you know if I knew where it was I'd just take a photo of the of the photo and, and post it on this I don't know if I don't remember which book that was in my climbing book collection but yeah I thought that was something else but these things have uh, been used for a long time so anyway that's uh that's it for this video for day hope you enjoyed it and uh we'll see you next time bye bye